Good kitten internet. And there we go. Let's get back to some Vandal Hearts, shall we? You will notice that I am not using save states. As previously mentioned in the last video, they seem to be glitching a bit. I can use fast forward with no problems, but the save states themselves cause it. So, I'm not going to do it. So, how it goes? No kitty cam today. Um, not that the camera's not active. I just have it hidden at the moment. But I don't actually have a kitty over here right now. He's sleeping probably in his room. That seems to be where he's been at for... Time. So. We have finished scenario one. We're now on scenario two. There we go. Just needed to drop my volume so it didn't echo out. So, oh, um, this is our little menu thing. We can see the status of our characters. We have one character at level 6 and two at level 5, I believe. Yep. Um, this is where we can manipulate items and also the wagon. So, similar to how in Training Force 2, you have the caravan that can store an unlimited number of items, but each character's inventory is limited. It's the same thing here in Vandal Hearts. This is one of the reasons why I've been saying... Vandal Hearts is absolutely based off of Shining Force 2. Even the same number of characters in a battle. Um, so you can actually only hold two items at a time. So instead, we have the wagon to hold everything else. Now, we don't actually have anything else. I believe... Yeah. So Clint used his herb and... Other options, uh, we have the settings menu that we had before, otherwise, move. I know, this is an exciting world map if I do say so myself. So there is no world map type of thing, you only have campaign maps like this one. The campaign map is used for the entire chapter, and we're in chapter one, so chapter one will use this map. I know it's shocking. But we're going to the capital city of Shumeria. First, let's go to HQ and give our report. So, there are various places that you can go in every place. You can go to a shop. Graphical glitch. I do like the appearance of the shopkeeper. And I think the shopkeeper's actually changing. I don't remember for sure. So, we can buy... Short sword versus light sword. So, the light sword was the thing that we could have gotten in um, that last battle if we had just moved everybody around in a weird way. I didn't want to do that. Um, so, instead, I'll just buy it here. So, you'll notice. Do you want to equip yourself with it now? Yes. Suits you very well. May I purchase your used equipment? That's right. The game will actually automatically allow you to sell back what you just purchased. Because most times, you don't need the extra thing lying around. You'll also notice that we have swords, arrows, and staves. We don't have any characters that use staves, so obviously something weird's going on. Also, you will notice, for instance, that the short sword is plus two attack, then plus four attack. The arrow is plus two attack, then plus three attack. And the wooden staff is plus one and then plus two. This is not even worth buying, to be honest here. Although, we are actually going to want... Uh, well, I'll get to that later. Armor. Let's go with the expensive stuff first, which is light armor which is what Diego's already wearing, but neither Clint nor Ash are wearing it. Uh, light armor, they're wearing a leather vest. Um, robes and cloaks are used by character classes that we don't currently have. But we have a leather band, which you'll see he is unfit. 
get an extra plus one defense, which, strangely enough, actually is worth it still. And then light helms for the others, which Ash is not wearing. There we go. Now everybody is out outfitted. So one thing when it comes to Vandal Hearts, as long as you don't take heavy casualties every battle, you'll have enough money to fully equip your entire party throughout the entire game. You never have to sell anything if you don't want to beyond your old equipment. And there are some items in the game that are just there for money. So there's usually extra money lying around. The problem comes up is if you start doing battles poorly. So if you end up having a battle where everyone except for Ash is dead, you might want to reset rather than actually saving the game over because you might not have enough money to do anything. So just keep that in mind if you're going to play this game. Uh, need some items. So this one restores some HP. This one restores MP. Magic oil is the most useful item in the game for exploiting something, which we'll get to later. We've got a cure potion, which cures a status effect, and a fire gem, which is an attack magic item that we obviously can't afford. Um, we're going to go ahead and buy another herb to give to Clint. And we're out of money now. Next up for an area that every town has is a dojo. Welcome to my dojo. You see cute today. You can either seek guidance, you can advance, or leave the dojo. So guidance is basically a background slash hint system. For instance, it is the goal of every man to attain the highest rank in his profession. After researching, uh, researching levels 10 and 20, you may come here to learn new skills. Always strive to find the best in your path. Or anything else that you wish to know. In other words, you advance, or promote in using Shining Force terms, at level 10 and level 20. You will notice that Ash is already level 6, or is he level 7 and everybody else is level I think he's level 6. So we're not actually that far off of promotion. Uh, in fact, if I remember correctly, it is possible to promote before the end of the first chapter of the game. Um, the first promotion is very important for reasons that I will go into detail later. But long story short, you get a major decision, very similar to the way your promotion in Shining Force 2 works, where certain characters have a promotion item that allows them to promote to a different class. In Vandal Hearts, they just remove the item and allow you to promote to two different classes. So, that's nice. The seven classes correspond to the seven elements that Tora mastered. They are Knight, Armor, Archer, Airman, Mage, Priest, and Monk. These are the seven basic styles of classes in the game. Remember when I pointed out that there was a sword icon for Ash and Clint and a bow icon for Diego? These are what the icons correspond to. The sword icon is for knights. Armor will be a shield icon, which we haven't seen yet. Bow is archer icon. Airman is a spear icon. Or actually, I think it's wings icon, if I remember right. Mage is a... Mage is rod. Priest is a staff. And monk is a fist. Give you a hint. You will find character class characters of each of these classes throughout your game. Each of them have their own strengths and weaknesses, so choose classes wisely for a balanced party, which we will need to do. Hints. Sword defeats bow, bow defeats air, and air defeats sword. Armor is strong but slow. Mages are weak but wise. Monks use word and claw. Always remember these basic rules before you engage with your foe in war and hit their weak spots. Uh, actually, hold on a moment. Let me see if I can find the... Um, Rock, Paper, Scissors, uh, Lizard, Spock, Triangle for this game. One moment. And there. Or there. Uh, sorry, I actually had to scan this in. So this is the weapon triangle from the manual right here. This manual, I actually scanned it in because I couldn't quickly find my American version of the manual. Um, this is the weapon triangle in Japanese. And this doesn't help you. Uh, my Google Translate abilities are... I tried to use Google Translate on my phone to try to get a translation of those things. I keep getting it that way. And couldn't find much of anything, so I made my own. Give me a moment. Do, let's do my version of it, and... Oops, if I choose a different one. And there. 
So do, those are the actual symbols for everything. For, keep doing that. Those are the actual symbols for everything for reference. Um, so the way the triangle works is that there's basically two separate sets of things. One, um, you've got the, I will zoom in a little bit on just this side from left. So we're gonna only gonna pay attention to that. So at the top, you've got sword and fist. Fist represents monk. Both classes have the equivalent power in terms of the triangle. In other words, they are both strong against bowmen, but weak against airmen. And yes, everything is phrased as men, even though there are multiple genders of everything except for swordsmen in this game. Anyway, um, so in other words, there's that weapon triangle, but then you have the other side, which is to say that sword and fist are strong against the, um, what did they phrase it as in this game? Uh, why are you not re- There we go. I was hitting the wrong button. Um, so, priest and mage, and that is the correct order. I did look that one up. I figured that much. I couldn't figure out the order on sword and fist, so that might actually be backwards. But, um, monk and knight are strong against mage and priest. Mage and priest are strong against armor. Armor is strong against bow. Those of you that are thinking clearly right now can figure out why armor is generally considered the worst class in the game. It's because all they've done is swap a weakness against one type of unit for a weakness against two types of units that have range. Anyway, those are the um, seven powers or seven styles of classes in the game. Legend. Aurora underwent severe trials to master the seven great elements. If you seek true power, then you must undergo the six trials just as he did. Remember that when all other ways are lost, a door to the sacred knowledge is open to a bleak. So that is a hint that there's a little more to this game than what's going on. We'll cover that later. Um, otherwise, we have advance, which this is the area that we would promote people at, but right now we can't promote anybody. And that's all the dojo does. They never specify what the faith is in this game, but it's heavily hinted at being Christianity, actually. Just an interesting thing. Um, that could be a translation thing, though. Don't know. Anyway, um, we can go to the tavern normally, but Ash is insistent that we go make a report first. Uh, the tavern's usually where you hear rumors and you could actually pick up some items in the tavern. But we can't do that right now. We need to go to headquarters. That is Clint, for reference. That concludes my final report. Hmm... See, well done. Let's take a good look into this the background of this uh, Zutgach. I agree. As always, big guy gets away, and the truth gets swept under the carpet. And the small guy gets screwed. Hey, you're out of line. What are you gonna do about it? I'm the same height as you somehow. Hmm. Right. A lot of things wrong with this government. Corrupt politicians, oppressive taxes, and not enough police. Very laws enacted after the war to save the nation from its plight, causing more harm than good. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor. No matter how filthy things get, as long as we remember who we are, we, the people, have the freedom to change things for the better. That's right! My character's boss is actually a staunch Republican, and not U.S. political party Republican, more like French Revolution style Republican. But um, so the Republic of Astaria seems to be very heavily modeled off of um, the First Republic of France. 
That's my guess, at least. I don't know how much of this is, again, I don't know how much is translation versus actual in the game, because I've never played the Japanese version and I don't understand Japanese. It's that freedom that we so that so many people died for 15 years ago. So now we know that the Republic of Star is only 15 years old. That was also in the opening sequence, if you had skipped through it. I understand. I had no right to stuff like that, I'm sorry. No, no, it's quite alright. In any case, you all did a fine job. Why don't you relax a little? Awesome. Sorry about that. Hmm. Now that, how about we head to a tavern for a drink? I guess showing alcohol use and drug use in a very, very light manner might have been reasons why it contributed to the rated M, but really, this game is... If I had a kid, I would have no issues whatsoever having a 10-year-old play this. I don't remember anything in this game that would make me want to hide this from a 10-year-old. Now, admittedly, I tend to be quite a bit more, shall we say, liberal with such things, personally, but I don't understand. So, we can attempt to leave town, but we're not ready to leave yet. This game will keep you on the rails. It is not possible, to my knowledge, to sequence break this game. I have looked at other people trying to speedrun wild or Bindle Hearts. Can't sequence break it. So we need to go to the tavern. Let's talk to the innkeeper. I thought things would get better after the revolution. And 15 years after all. But everything's still the same, except now we're getting crushed by taxes. Makes you wonder if we were things were this bad before. Or ah. Makes you wonder whether things were this bad or not before. That's a really awkwardly phrased sentence. That's a bad translation. Uh, Bandle Hearts actually has a reasonably good translation, if you can't tell. Uh, it's significantly better than Wild Arms 2. Streets are filled with bandits and scum. Arc's council is filled with corrupt politicians who only care about their debates and patting their fists. Now we have to worry about daily terrorist threats. What's going to happen to this country? Harris killed Mr. Smenta. Met. Metana? Metana. Metana. Head of the council just three days ago. They said it was work of the old royalists. If you ask me, it could have been a, any of a dozen different groups. It just happened. I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. A lot of dissatisfied people in the current political system. So this is signs that, okay, yeah, the Republic is not doing so great. There's daily terrorist threats, uh, members of the council are getting assassinated, and apparently we've been introduced to at least one group, which are the old Blue Bloods. Um, there are other groups as well, obviously. Old Royalists, sorry. Old man? Huh. Aris, we're here to see how things had turned out. The way he would have said. Remember from the beginning that the person who was supposed to lead the Republic was Eris the Sage, who disappeared. We know nothing about Eris the Sage other than what is being said in the game. So it's not like there is a long backstory to Eris in the manual or anything like that. And again, I'm trying to keep things where we only have... I'm only stating the knowledge that we have available as it comes up. Why I started explaining the class situation or the character class types, because that's now available for us to learn. Uh, and also, it's in the manual. Nobody else to talk to, so let's go ahead and leave. Uh, help! Help! Somebody! Riot! What? Calm down and tell... I'm sorry. Calm down and tell us what happened. A riot has broken out in the Dover area. Dover area? Ugh, the ghetto for former nobles. Sorry. Hmm. The Dover area? Yeah, the ghetto for the former nobles. I hate blood. Always the first to negotiate, even during the revolution. That's the terrible part! The army decided that the royalists were behind the assassination of Smetana, and they've come to take Count Claymore away. Things got tense, the young nobles gathered around the soldiers, and then there was some shoving, and then someone drew a sword, and... Kind of fool, let's get over there right away. 
Oh, remember, we're part of the Defense Forces, so we're effectively a hybrid of army and police. I'm going to go ahead and save just so we don't have to go through that again. So our cartridge ram is where I'm going to save the in-between the things. Right, now we can head over to the Dover area. That's now an option on our list for us to go to. You'll notice that we don't really have an option to do anything else. Flint is staring at us once more for the loading screen. One through 20. These are the advanced troops? We, we surrender! Surrender to death! Yeah, the Crimson Guard are not nice. Barbarians! Guard. Special anti terrorist form. They're an elite fighting force formed by Hell Spites. Now that's a name that's a sign of somebody not doing great. Hell Spites. What type of mother names their kid Hell Spites? The type of mother that, you know, has a prophecy that they're going to be a horrible, evil person? He's a notorious, he's a notorious war hawk, the defense hawk. They're famous for ruthless be being, ah, for, ah, speaking is hard. They're famous for being ruthless with terrorists, but this is too much. It frowned on it. Troops, assemble. Well, if it isn't the security force. What are you doing poking your little noses around here? I know. You're Ash Lambert. The son of a traitor becoming a platoon leader. What a joke. What did you say? You scum. Stop it, both of you. Ash! Let him talk. Always trying to sound like a saint, aren't you? As you can see, we've cleared the area of enemies. Some are still holed up in that church. You got to pursue those who got away and put them down. As long as you're here, you can take care of those in the church. Make sure you do a good job now. I love how Kane stares directly at the player. Everybody else is kind of like a side profile, but Kane is just like, I'm talking to you. A lousy creep! Yes, but what are we going to do, Ash? Let's go and see if they will surrender. Looks like there are no enemies around, but don't relax your guard. You can tell because we're in an isometric perspective. Where'd these monsters come from? Summoned by a powerful maid. I'm gonna have to cut through them. That's right, battle time. So, victory is just arriving at the church and defeat is death of ash. So let's take a look around to see what we have. There's some obvious treasure there. And ob the literal obvious treasure chests as well. So, let's take a look at our enemies. Can you see? So you will notice that these are wing class which means that they're going to be strong against both Ash and Clint, but weak against Diego. So we need to be a little careful with them, although they're significantly lower level, so it's not as big of a problem. If they were actually on par with our level, that would be a sign that you should not have your sword units nearby. Obviously, we can't really do that because, well... Um... Yeah, we'll just go with everybody is going to be attacked. Uh, in addition, you can also tell that they only have 18 attack and no equipment. That's going to help us. 
Um, their movement, on the other hand, is pretty far. Uh, they can already attack both Clint and Ash, even if we didn't do anything. That button. Sorry, it's been a few days. Uh, we also have some archers back here. Goblins. Level 3 goblins. And he knocked the microphone down. Um, these goblins have hunter arrow and are wearing imp pants. Anyway, um, they're not particularly strong units. They only have 16 attack, but they are higher level. And level means quite a bit in this game, even for monsters. Um, you'll find out more about that later. So unfortunately, we can't actually reach any of the ghosts using Lint. Only one who we can actually do anything with this turn is Diego. We're going to do. Now remember, ghosts are weak against bow, so this should do more damage than normal. And it does. Diego can one-shot any of the flyers on the screen. This will be the point where Diego will start leveling up like crazy. We do still want to keep people relatively evenly leveled, but remember, we can rebalance levels by just using a healing item. So, we don't have to worry as much about that. So the way you open treasure chests is by attacking them. This makes perfect sense. And we found an herb. Well, I guess we didn't need to buy that herb after all. And we have found light arrow. I guess we didn't actually need to buy the arrow either. Oh well. This is what I get for not looking ahead. I was wondering if they were going to do that. So, the music that you hear during the enemy phase, which, yes, I'm going to take more damage than um, The music that you hear during the enemy phase is actually Zootgog's theme. It's just that when they were making the game, they had intended to have different battle themes and never did. As a result, the enemy turn battle theme is always, always Zootgog's theme. There's no boss battle music or anything like that. Well, there sort of is, but you'll hear it on your turn, not on the enemy turn. This is a pretty filthy place for nobles to live in. After the war, their estates were confiscated. Special tax was levy on them. In a boot. Like the Asha dynasty before them, we are oppressing them. In group. Politicians always make the weak in society pay for others' mistakes. Well, that would make anyone want to fight back. I would want to make anyone. Yes, you are going to get a healthy dose of political skepticism in this game. As you should. XP, so in other words, I'm leveling up every other attack right now, which is nice. Ooh, didn't quite one shot. That's a nice. Oh well. At least he can heal himself. And I'm not too concerned about overleveling Ash, of all people. I don't like doing this in melee range because they can counterattack if I don't one-shot them, but I already knew I was going to one-shot them, so it didn't matter. So you'll notice that the first time I attacked, I got 67 XP. That time I only got 38, even though I did the exact same attack, but I've leveled up once. So I think the way XP works in this game is that you're given a large amount of XP, but it gets halved every level different that you are. So if Diego was one level lower, as in he would have been level... Or instead of level 5, I bet he would have leveled up just from one attack, regardless of his current XP. 
Anyway, there's no penalty for having too many extra turns, so there's no reason for us to not... Oh, of course. I may end up having Clint use another one. Don't know. Clint got more XP and thus levels up and jumps up and down like a goober. Everybody jumps up and down when they level, by the way. Uh, there's one class in there as an exception. But anyway, we have to release that drawbridge. We examine the switch. It should release it. So, yep, this is still a tutorial battle, basically. <clears throat> but the special thing is, is that these two archers here won't be able to do anything to us on this side of the map. And there's something for us to examine, so we might as well. Yes, you will start noticing my Shining Force 2 tactics of always heal will come up frequently. However, in this case, we can't just replay battles repeatedly in order to grind for levels or anything, so I don't do it as often. This early on, though, yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, also, I should mention that the level ups are constant. There's no randomness in this game for level ups. Because I don't believe there is. I'm pretty sure I've anal analyzed. I've analyzed that before. Not load bad. We might as well just fast forward through that. They're not doing anything until we knock down the drawbridge. Everybody's level six? Everybody's level six. You will notice that I can't move on top of the switch right now. That's because it's too high up. Uh, it takes more movement to move up or down elevation than it does just moving over regular elevation. Everybody right now. But again, there is no turn limit in this particular battle, so there's no reason for us to not just take our time. And we have found mushroom, but we are overloaded, so we sent it to the wagon. So if we do find things, and we don't have enough inventory space, it just goes to the wagon. Which is fine for this. I'm just prepping people and getting them in position, basically. Fast forward a little bit. There's no penalty for taking my time. So I'm going to. Alright, we'll release it next turn. Alright. Let's go ahead and make a save here. Damn it. Such graphical prowess. This was high tech way back when. Now, unfortunately, we won't be able to actually. be able to reach them this turn, unfortunately, but not much we can do about that. Yep, they're both going to go after Ash. That's why Ash's back is toward Flint, rather than Ash's back being toward anybody else. And Ash makes a good um, arrow sponge because, well, nobody else is going to be doing it. 
second. So something that I'm really curious about when it comes to the Saturn version. So I already noticed that there's something weird going on with the treasure chest in this version. There's no enemies left, so. Our objective is to reach the entrance, not do anything else. But something that I know that doesn't work in the PS1 version, I'm curious. I can! For some reason, that doesn't quite work right in the... This version, one version of the game. I'm not entirely sure why. Action, magic, heal thyself because you might as well. Free, it's like free XP. Yeah, so this battle was definitely much shorter than the previous one because I had less to explain. At this point, we're just moving up. There's no enemies that are spawning right now. there's any other hidden object take a look around the scene Let's see and that would be the only other spot i would think of but there's no special thing on the ground they're always always visible see this corner here nope that looks normal Pretty sure that's everything. I think these early battles only have two hidden items. Uh, it's the later battles that will have four. I think four is usually max. I don't know if it's an engine thing. So I think it's technically all characters need to be up on that platform. Because I don't believe that counts. Nope. There we go. You win! Yeah, the scrolling down thing's weird. That doesn't happen in the game. So each of these were worth a 110 gold each. 11d10, what my brain was trying to say. The previous battle was 100 gold each. So is it plus one for each battle? I think it is, but it might be. No. Let's continue. Remember, we are playing until the next available save point. So that is Diego for reference. Diego is younger. He is 19, if I remember correctly. It actually says in the manual. Let's see. The manual says that Diego is... So Ash is 24. Diego is 21. That's right. And Clint is 27. So none of, and you'll notice that the main character is actually an adult. In fact, there's only three characters in the game that are below the age of 21. And even then, they're still adults. They might be late teenager, but there's no like 12 year old playable character or anything. You're surrounded, drop your weapons. We don't want any more needless bloodshed. You mean that, don't you? Of course I do. Don't listen, Count! He's a blood-drinking devil! But if we continue, everyone will die. Excuse me, Count? How can you trust these soldiers that just slaughtered us? He needs in somewhere. Also, this man seems different in terms of murderers. For one, he's not wearing red. And for two, he's not quite staring directly at the camera. I will give him a chance. 
we surrender. That right there is definitely not something that would happen in a normal strategy RPG. Like I said, this game actually has a lot. And the stories are relatively good from what my memory tells me. What my memory remembers, as I was about to say. Bump, bump, bump. I'm Ash Lambert, Starian Security Force. Thank you for your quick compliance. My name is Roland Claymore. I represent this district. These riots are my responsibility, as I was unable to quell my subordinates. Against. All that I ask is that you do not blame them. We have laws here. It's not for me to decide. But I will report that you offered us no resistance. That's enough. Stop right there. Yes, this is, in fact, the Crimson Guard theme. Ah, the Crimson Guards have come back. <laughs> nice job for a bunch of weakling. But I will assume control from this point on. Or maybe the son of a traitor wants to take credit for this. I want no credit. Do as you like. Thank you, I will. Uh, which one of you are claiming? I am. Good. Come here. I don't know why he kind of walks like that, but whatever. Yes. I have no need for the others. Eh, just kill them all. Yup. I didn't say this was a nice story. I just said that this was a story. What? What have you done? Oh my goodness. The young, the youth. No. Murderer. I won't forget this. Pain, you bastard! Oh, so the traitor finally shows his colors. Yeah. I've wanted to cross swords with you for a long time. That is a really big sword, by the way. Stop! Stop it, you two! Commander Beckett! So now we know his name is Clive Beckett. Clive Beckett, why does that name sound familiar? Apparently, there was a uh, name of an aboriginal man in Australia. I don't think it's related. I think they just chose a name. Stop. Both sworn to defend this country. Leave us be. Better watch that mouth of yours, Kane. The Crimson Guard is already in enough trouble with the council more trouble and even your dad hell spites won't be able to help. That's right. The commander of the Crimson Guard is the son of hell spites who's the head of the counterterrorism force. Save your hollow threats for someone else. But I'll be a big man and forget your rude words to me. However, taking this old blue blood with me. Can't stop it. This is what I mean. This is the peak level of profanity in this game, by the way. Is using damn and bastard. There are PG movies that have less profanity. <sighs> Thanks for staying cool, Ash. Be fine. Outside of the four people that were just murdered in the back, their blood is splurted everywhere. But, you know, it'll be fine. Loading screen for Diego again. Oh, and by the way, we will totally get backstories for every character or nearly every character the next day also i have the mouse cursor over again excuse me sir now 
somebody new there. Hm. Oh, you must be Ash. I never know if Dolph is supposed to, uh, what pronouns to use for Dolph. Let's find out. Uh, the wiki seems to also not use any pronoun. You know what? Um, they do actually start mentioning he, but I'm gonna go with they, them. Oh! You must be Ash. Ash, this is Dolph Crowley. He's a. a uh, it is he. Never mind. He's a representative from the Young Revolutionary Party. Well, nice to meet you. Dolph has been sent out as a mediator to deal with yesterday's incident. I understand exactly how you feel, Ash. The Crimson Guards were completely at fault in yesterday's massacre. Normally, there'd be no need for a mediator in a case like this, but there are a few complicated. As you know, the Crimson Guards are the pet project of Hell Spites the Hell's tactics may be questionable, but his power and influence in the council are not. I personally think that he is a dangerous man who needs to be watched. Someone's actually listening to what Ash is saying. Once more, we're so far away from the standard plot of a strategy RPG at this point in time that my brain was just going, wait, what? Over and over and over again when I played this as a kid. Two council members are competing to become head. Hell Spites and Ronaldo Castile, the head of the domestic security force. And your boss. Can you see the pattern here? I think it's more than just a personal grudge between us and the Crimson Guard. I think it can escalate into a confrontation between the DSF and the army? Well, let's not be overly pessimistic. But we need to act swiftly to avoid future trouble. But what do you want us to do? As punishment, we'll send you on leave away from your policing duties here in the capital. But that's just to establish your cover. The truth is that I have a top secret. <clears throat> oh, what is this top secret mission? Do you know who General Magnus Dunbar is? Yeah, of course. The greatest hero of our country. Why? He's also next in line behind Hell in the defense ministry. Well, three months ago, he went to Gilbaris Island with a squad of hand-picked soldiers. He hasn't been seen since. The very opening sequence of the game after the monologue? That's what they're now referring to. Gilbaris Island in the Gadar Sea? Why? I don't know, but I've heard rumors that he was acting on secret orders from Hell, who was planning a coup d'etat. I is out of control. And he wants us to investigate that, huh? But Magnus is known for his sense of justice. I don't think he would blindly follow Hell Spite's orders. Secret mission makes me uneasy. Still not personally sure how much we should believe this Dolph. Might be wise idea not to accept this mission. Or assignment. No, I'm going to go. If we stay here, we may cause trouble for you. You've been a good friend to me. Ash, that's not why I had you assigned here. Of course I know that. But whatever Dolph's reasons may be, we can't ignore what happened to General Magnus. That's true. Why don't you take a vacation anyway? Island trip? Sounds great. I understand, but this is a dangerous assignment. I want to be careful every step of the way. And that does it. 
for the second chapter of the game. I believe technically the first battle is chapter zero, so now we have completed chapter one, and we are now on chapter two. Yep, scenario two, excuse me. Chapter one, scenario two. Turns, rounds, generations, etc. Anyway, hope you're enjoying this so far, Internet. Um, I know I am. And it's been a while since I've been able to play a strategy RPG that actually, you know, does things like this. So, I'll talk to you next time, Internet. And why do I have so much packet or rendering loss? What the heck? Bye, Internet! Bye.